Good, how are you? Good, good. Where are you from? I'm from Colombia. Oh, cool. I don't think I've seen you in class before. Are you new here? Uh, yes, in, in this class, yes. But I I have studying in other, with other teacher. All right, cool. Who else is here? Eric, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How are you? Hi, fine. Where are you I from? Am from? I am from Peru. Okay. So always lots of people here from Peru. Yes, I see it. <laughs> uh, hey, Mayor. Hello. How are you? Good. Your webcam's always pointed at like the ceiling or something. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Yeah, that's what. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm fine, thanks, Amanda. Um, and Michael, do you have a microphone? Yes. Oh, okay. How How are you? I'm fine. Thank you for us. So how's everybody's day going? What time is it where you are, everybody? It's a uh, it's a uh, twelve. It's noon here. Okay. Yeah, just the daytime. Yeah, <laughs> just finished my lunch. I just woke up. I almost slept in. You guys would have not had me for class, they would have been sleeping. <laughs> okay, so today is a special topics class, so it's not really um, anything specific to um, the English language. I'm just going to kind of teach you about an interesting different topic, and we're going to talk about some stuff, and that's pretty much it. So there's no real grammar or structure or anything today, it's going to be mainly discussion. Um, so you guys can work on your speaking skills and descriptive skills and things like that. So um, I don't know if you guys know anything about graffiti. Does anyone know anything about graffiti? I'll type it in the side in the chat. For street art. It's when they write something on, on the walls, yeah. especially the young, the young people. Yeah. So like painting things on the walls or um, painting pictures on the walls. Does anybody else know anything about graffiti? Yes, for example, in Peru, mm -hmm. is is very common in some areas. Oh, okay. But not always are mm, great uh, draws or drawings. Sometimes people just put their names, you know, and it's an ugly thing, but... No, yeah, not always great drawings. Yes, but in other cases, you can see a, a really piece of art. Yeah, sometimes people just tag their names, or sometimes it's gang-related, and people will tag the name of the gangs. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That, okay, that so is the bad side, I think. Pardon? That is the bad side. Yeah, so I think there's good and bad sides to it. So we're going to talk about all of that today. Um, uh, what about Benjamin? Do you know anything about graffiti? Uh, here in Colombia, is is no common uh, that the people write uh, graffiti or strip art, but in some place, uh, there are some uh, uni university universitary that uh, writing uh, some messages that so so nobody uh, understand what is this oh, oh, who is Right, please. All right, good. Um, I'm 
second. My webcam's cutting out. Okay, I'm just going to share my screen and I'm going to tell you a little bit about graffiti and we'll watch a l short video and then we can talk some more about it, okay? So, okay. Can everybody see that? Uh, yes. Yes, yes, it's okay. Yeah, it's not really that clear, but it's okay. It's uh, yeah, we can read it. See if I can make it any bigger. Okay, I think I think now it's perfect. I or... think it's better now. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, what is graffiti? Um. Actually, I'll get you guys to read. So, let's start with Eric. Can you read the first point? Okay, what is a graffiti? It's writing or drawings, scribbled. Scribbled? Scratched. Okay, Sorry. so whenever you come across a word that you don't know, just uh -huh. tell me, or and I'm going to type them all in the chat, so we'll have like a little vocabulary list at the end, okay? Okay, how do you pronounce the word that is after drawings? Scribbled. Scribbled. So it means like sketched um, or drawn really loosely. So when someone just takes a pen and draws really quickly, that's scribbling something. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Or drawings scribbled, scratched, or sprayed illicitly on a wall or other surface in a public place. Good. So when you say scratched, don't it's not scratched like this. It's okay. scratched. Oh, okay. So you can't really hear the E, and that goes for pretty much any time you say a word that ends in ED. Uh huh. Yes. It's always just going to sound like a D. You will never say like sprayed, scratched, because that doesn't that doesn't make sense. Usually the E is just silent. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, I got it. All right. Um, does everybody understand all those words illicitly? Illicitly just means illegally. So when you're doing something that's illegal. Okay, um, Fanny, can you read the next point? Fanny, are you there? Funny. Okay. Can you read the uh, next thing? Yes. Uh, it ranges from simple writing words to elaborate word paintings and has excited science at ancient time with example dating back to ancient Greeks and the Roman Empire. Good. Does everybody understand all those words? Yes. 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 Alright, cool. So, it's not like a new thing, graffiti. It's been around for a really long time. We've just kind of um, adopted it to, um, to the more common scene. So, okay, next. Um, Giovanni, can you read a point? Okay. Uh, in modern times, spray paint and marker pens have become the most commonly used graffiti materials. Good. Michael, can you read the next point? And yes, in most countries, marking or painting property without the property owner's consent is considered defacement and yeah. vandalism, which is a punish, punish punishable crime. A punishable crime. Good. Um, does everybody understand what defacement means? No, I don't. I don't know what is that meaning. Okay, defacement and vandalism both mean um, like destruction of something. So if I were to um, take I don't know a spray paint and started spraying all over this wall in a house that I'm renting for no reason, then uh -huh. that would be vandalism or defacement of that property. Uh, both words are synonymous. So, 
It's when you destroy something illegally. Okay. Um. Yes, they're synonyms. Ah. Uh, okay. Synonyms for destroying something usually illegally. There, I just put like a short definition in the side, but they pretty much mean when you destroy something that you're you're not allowed to destroy. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean something negative because some people view graffiti in a positive light. So maybe somebody painted like a masterpiece on a wall, but still, if the wall isn't theirs, then it could be considered vandalism. Okay. Okay. Um, were there any other words there that you don't understand? Mm -hmm. Punishable. Punishable just means it's something that someone could legally punish you for. Something that someone could really... Okay. Alright, let's go to the next point. Um, Mohammed? Mohammed, are you there? Okay, Philip, do you want to read the next point? Yeah, so... At the, the top? Whole, the, whole, the whole slide, right? The whole thing. What is graffiti? Graffiti may also express underlying social and political messages and a whole of the journal, right? I can read this one. Yep. So when you say graffiti, I put it over in the chat. Graffiti. But it's graffiti. 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 Yep. What is graffiti? Yeah. <laughs> Should I read it over again? Sure. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Graffiti, right? Graffiti. 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 Yes. graffiti. Perfect. 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 Graffiti may also express underlying social and political messages and a whole journal, right? G E R N? Um, genre. 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 Artistic expression. It's based upon spray, paint, graffiti styles. Good. Do you know what genre means? No. Genre? Is it like a type? Yeah. yeah that's what I a think. type. Yeah, it's so right. a whole new type of artistic expression. Um and it's all grouped into one type. So that's a genre, a group. And it's based on a type. So Did I have to finish the all post light? No, that's okay. Um I think okay. it's Umer's turn. Amir, can you do the next one? If you're there. You may no. Okay, Philip, do you want to just finish the slide? <laughs> sure. More than happy. One of the one of the most well known and world renowned graffiti okay. or street art artistic it's known by the name oh, Banksy. Banksy. Yeah. Banksy, yeah. Okay. World Renowned. World renowned just means famous. It's a fancy way to say famous. <laughs> so, the most world renowned graffiti or street artist is known as Banksy. Has anybody ever heard of Banksy? No, it's the first no. time for me. Yeah, in um, North America and in um, parts of Europe, uh, mostly England. Um, he's he's really really famous. So I'm just gonna show you a short video, and then we can keep going. Does anybody have any questions? I know there's a lot of kind of hard words in the slides, but I'm just trying to challenge you. So <laughs> <laughs> if you have questions or you don't understand a word, like just type it into the chat. Um, don't worry about interrupting, and I'll explain it. <laughs> okay. So okay. can everybody click on the YouTube tab? Um, it'll pop up a little reminder. Everyone sees the video at the same time. So if you pause 
um, or skip to another part in the video or stop it or put on a new video, everybody can see that. So please don't. <laughs> He's called Britain's Most Wanted Artist, and he quite likes that title. The graffiti artist Banksy has been doing his thing for the past 10 years. There we go. Okay, let's get off the YouTube tab now. If you didn't see the video, I can help you figure out how to, sh how to see videos um, at the end of class, um, but I won't show any more for now. So that was just kind of a little introduction to Banksy. We're going to see some more of his work, um, but first I'll go back to the slideshow and we can just learn a little bit about him. So, Banksy is a... Ooh, is an English-based graffiti artist, political activist, film director, and painter. One of the most interesting things about Banksy is that his identity is not fully known, as he aims to remain hidden from the public eye and known entirely from his body of work. His satirical street art and subversive epigrams combine dark humor with graffiti done in a distinctive stenciling technique. Such artists such artistic works of political and social commentary have been featured on streets, walls, and bridges of cities throughout the world. 
Um, are there any words here that anybody needs me to explain? Uh, no. Uh, no? No. Okay. How do you pronounce uh, in the last line? Yeah. After cities, throw throughout. Out. I'll type in how to pronounce it. Okay. Throughout. So the G and the H are silent. Uh huh. Throughout. 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 Yeah. Throughout. Uh huh. And you understand what it means? So throughout the world just means like all over the world. Okay. Stenciling. I'll show you. Stenciling is. Let's see. Okay. Stenciling would be if I had like this piece of paper with some sort of image in the middle and I put it up against a wall and then spray painted and then took this off and you were left with this image. That's stenciling. So like, and then you take it off and the image is left there. So it's a it's a type of art. So people will turn their art pieces into a stencil by cutting it out of a piece, a big piece of paper. Then they'll just press it up against a wall and spray paint over it. And when they take it off, their drawing will be there. Does anyone have any other questions before I go to the next one? Okay. Banksy's work was born of the Bristol underground scene, which involved collaborations between artists and musicians. So the underground scene, underground scene, is um, another way of saying something, something that isn't mainstream. So something that isn't necessarily in the public eye, but still goes on. So kind of like how there's the black market there's the underground scene and generally graffiti is considered part of the underground scene so um, known for his contempt for the government in labeling graffiti as vandalism Banksy displays his art on public surfaces such as walls even going as far as to put up physical prop pieces sometimes are there any words there that anybody needs explained no no. Nearest have been known to attempt to sell his street art. And his first film, Exit Through the Gift Shop, billed as the world's um, first street art disaster movie and made its debut at the 2010 Sundance Film Festival. Has anybody seen it? Exit Through the Shop. Has anyone seen? Has anyone seen that movie? No. It's an interesting movie based uh, on graffiti. No. Um, I'll send you a link for it at the end. Uh, you can actually watch the whole movie on YouTube if you want to. It's actually really cool. It's not boring. I promise. <laughs> so. I'm just going to show some of Banksy's work, and um, I want you guys to take turns describing what you see. Um, so I'll list in the side. Describe what you see. What do you think it means? Do you think there is a political or social message? behind it. So I just listed a couple questions in the side. I'm going to show you some of his art and I want you guys to kind of describe it to me, okay? Okay. So. Can you zoom in a little bit? Because we can't see it really clear. Yeah.
that little thing on the wall in red, it says no ball games. So how about, um, Ellie, are you there? No? Yes, he is. Uh, no, it's not a book. It's a piece of graffiti. So that's actually a real picture. So it's a picture of the street art that's on that wall on the corner of the street. Excuse me, the red box is a, a book or you say game? Um, in the red box, it says no ball games. And yes, it looks like it's a book. Oops. Sorry. So, okay, who wants to describe it? How about um, we'll start with Philip? Matter of fact, I'm looking on the Google, but I can't understand. It's like a meaning inside of it. It's not just what it what it shows on the surface, right? <laughs> Yeah, no, okay, exactly. I'll pass this one. It's kind of difficult. If we're going to try to explain, it's going to be a lot of, a lot of ridiculous things. Not really, yeah. um, okay, so just at face value, what do you see there? Like, without thinking about what the deeper meaning is, what, what, what do you see? Are you asking me? Yeah. Okay, I think, okay, it's no ball game. A lot of time in the streets, because many, you know, a lot of kids, they play in game, they might involve to danger, you know, might be car crash or something. Mm -hmm. So they just uh, have a sign that show people can't place anything that with the ball around here. So this sign, I think showing that the kids playing the ball and somehow the sign just stop them from having fun or something like that. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. Yeah, so that's what I think. Basically, at, um, on the surface, you would say, on the surface, I see um, a boy and a girl throwing something back and forth, basically. And then, yeah, yeah. so it's a social message. Fanny, what do you think? Uh, I see two children try to reach an a opportunity in order to improve uh, their life. Good. So it's a message about opportunity. Um, yes. So it says no ball games on that book. What do you think that means? That Banksy has chosen to replace their ball with a book. Do you think that means something specific? Uh, maybe Anybody? in order to to learn uh, uh, any uh, study or any language in order to, to improve their life. Good. Yeah, so it could mean a couple different things. So it could be, um, like Fanny said, a social message about learning and education. Or, Philip, it could also just be um, something about um, society being too tough on these kids. I guess it would depend on where the graffiti is. This one is actually, I have a little note. Oh, oops. This one is in England, I believe. Yes, it's in England. Um, so it could be a message about saying that the kids aren't allowed to play on the streets. So it's something about authority, or it could be something about education. Um, does anybody else have any ideas? Yes, I think it's about education. OK. Uh, in this case, the. Uh, what is the name of the author of the bank? Banksy. Banksy. He replaced a ball for the book. So uh, he tries to express that children need to to read more. Yeah. Good. In, instead playing with balls, I don't know. So yeah, okay, so maybe okay. it's it's saying that kids should be reading more than playing outside on the streets. Um, it could also maybe suggest that learning is fun. 
<laughs> yeah, because right. he's put like a book where a ball's supposed to be, so he's trying to say, oh, like, look, you can have fun and learn at the same time. Yes, so, so um, maybe we need to read with the same enthusiasm. Enthusiasm, good. Exactly. Like when we play, when we're playing some sport. Yeah, really good. So um, j you can see we've already come up with like five different explanations of the work. So that just goes to show you that there's always lots going on and there's lots of different things that it could mean. It just depends on your interpretation. So, all right, let's go to the next one. <laughs> Has anybody seen Pulp Fiction? <laughs> the movie? No, it's... no, but I recognize one of them. Yeah, um, that's John Travolta and uh, oh, what's his name? I can't even think of his name. But yeah, it's a parody. It's a parody of the movie Pulp Fiction, where those bananas would normally be guns. So, <laughs> um, so maybe just take a quick look at it, and then can somebody describe it to me at face <coughs> value? So without, th don't think about what it means, just what does it look like? Maybe uh, Giovanni. Okay. Uh, it's the graffiti look like two, I don't know, two, how can I say, um, monos? Donkeys? Two donkeys with, with the bananas. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are looking something that um, I don't know. They, they are looking something new. Okay. <laughs> you could call them gangsters. <laughs> so they're both looking at something. We don't know what, and they're holding bananas. Um, yes. Okay, so you've had a minute to kind of look at it. Does anybody have any ideas about what the message might be behind this one? Uh, Mohammed, are you there? Uh -uh. See, he's typing. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> They're looking at a monkey. They might be looking at a monkey, handing him a banana. That's possible. Um, okay, how about Ymir? <coughs> Ymir, are you there? Can't hear you if you are. Ali? Hmm? Ali? Hello. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Um, so I don't know if you caught the first bit, but we're just talking about graffiti um, by the street artist Banksy, and this is one of his pieces, so um, we're kind of trying to describe it and what we think it means. Mm. So... They could say, give me all banana. <laughs> <laughs> so I pasted there. Um, do you think there's a political or a social message behind it? Give me all the bananas. <laughs> Hand them over or die. <laughs> Good, Fanny. It's a mockery. Mockery or um, a satire, you could say. I think it's a mockery about the violence against against the violence because the violence is a bad way. Good. That's perfect. That's exactly what I thought too when I saw it. They're replacing guns with bananas. So they he it's like Banksy tried to find the silliest object he could to replace guns with, to mock uh, violence. That's really good. Mockery is a good word. Does anybody else have any thoughts about it? I totally agree with you. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's exactly what it's saying there. All right, mm -hmm. let's go to the next one. I love that he used bananas, too, just because I think that's kind of funny. He tried to pick, like, a really silly image. Yeah. So here's <laughs> an another one. This one has bananas again. He really loves bananas. He does love bananas. Um, does anybody, everybody know about Andy Warhol, the artist? 
No. Andy Warhol um, was a really famous pop artist. Really famous pop artist. And one of the images that he used to always use were bananas. And they looked exactly like this. So um, the fact that he's using bananas is actually kind of referencing Andy Warhol, who was a really famous artist. So in a way, he's kind of making a statement like, hey, look, um, I'm an artist, too. Like, I can draw bananas. <laughs> so um, all right. Does anybody, what does everybody think about this? Does anyone have any ideas? You see there's a monkey over in the corner with um, what looks like some sort of bomb. Yeah, he's trying to explode. Yeah. But Monkey's revolution, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, who, and do you think there's a social or a political message behind this? Um, maybe social. Okay. Like what? Because some, sometimes we, or human beings, tend to act like monkeys. Good. Uh, no? Yeah. We tend to be violent, maybe, I don't know. No, that's really that's a really good point. It's um, it's called a metaphor. So, acting like a monkey, or no, that's a simile. So, acting like a monkey means doing something crazy or um, without thinking it through, right? So yeah. that's that's what I thought too when I saw it. So there's a monkey, and it's it's a it's a metaphor for how humans act like monkeys when when they do what? What's the monkey doing? He's trying to explode a bomb. Well, well, in this case, bananas. <laughs> yeah, bananas. So he's using the bananas again. Um, and like Fanny pointed out, it's related to violence, right? Yes. So he's using a monkey to blow up bananas. And again, it's, it's all... Oh, I think, I think I got a point. Symbol. Something like... Okay, Philip. Sure. Uh, I mean, you say a monkey bro and they're going to blow a, they throw a, a three bananas, which I think I'm I'm not sure what pattern it relates to. It might be political or social, but he's saying that it's impossible for monkey to explode the banana because it's that it is favorite food that yeah the monkey monkey has banana every day, so it's somehow I have just got this point. <laughs> No, that's really good. That's really good. So yeah, it's like, like it's impossible for monkey to blast the bananas. Right. Yeah. You don't know what's in your hand. Maybe you'll make mistakes, and you don't know. Yeah, good, Mohammed. Exactly. Um, you never know what how much power you have over things that are in your hands, and it's really easy to make a mistake. Fanny says it's a political message. So, Fanny, what do you think? Fanny? Okay, in, in my opinion, it's a political message mm -hmm. uh, because the monkey uh, fight uh, using violence in order to obtain benefits. Uh, the benefit is, is the bananas. Yeah, good, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, so there's, I think there's two ways to look at it. You could say that the monkey is using violence to obtain the bananas which are something that he needs, right? Or you could also say that the monkey is destroying the one thing that he needs. The only thing that that monkey needs to survive are those bananas, and he's destroying them. So that could also be a metaphor for the way that humans act, right? It could be a political message saying that humans are, you know, destroying the environment, um, the world um, and the things in it, like our natural, everybody know what natural resources are? Yes. Um, it's a pretty well-known fact that uh, as humans are destroying natural resources, right? So um, it's like monkeys or bananas, I'm going to type it, are to monkeys as natural resources are to humans. They're the one thing we need 
to survive. So you would say monkeys are destroying the only thing they need, and at the same time, humans are too. Yeah, exactly, Mohammed, as we're doing now. So, um, yeah, Fanny, you had a really good point too, though. There's so that just shows you again. There's tons of different ways you could look at this. So it has lots and lots of different meanings. Um, I liked the the suggestion. I think whose whose suggestion, Ali, that we're all acting like monkeys. So it's another anti-war message or anti-destruction message. So there's a, a clear political message of some sort here. Okay. Does anyone have anything else to say about this one, or do you want to go on to a new one? No. This picture looks like a simple thing, but it ha really has a deep message. Yeah, exactly. And that, in English, we like to call an allegory. Allegory. I just have to throw it in there because it's English class and I'm an English nerd, so <laughs> it's an allegory. So an allegory, an allegory, I'm going to type it, is something that has a surface meaning and a deeper meaning. So usually on the surface, it appears to be simple, but when you look closer, look more closely, there's a deeper meaning hiding there. So that's an allegory. You see it all the time. Um, we see allegories all the time in art, books, the news, um, paintings, tons of things. So graffiti is another... Um, way to get across an allegorical message, allegorical message. So that's a really good point, uh, Eric, really good point, that it looks simple, but really it's not. There's, there's a lot more going on there. Yes, totally. All right. <laughs> Here's a new one. <laughs> this is very funny. So if you can't, if you can't see what's happening there, there is a little, um, a little man um, in one of those carts hanging on the wall, uh, painting. So, just so you know, this entire thing is part of the graffiti. There's not actually a guy there. It's all part of the graffiti. Oh, I can't believe that. It, it looks real, you know? <laughs> yeah, it does look real, yeah. but it's, it's all part of his painting. They're really great. So, take a minute to look at it, because there's, there's a lot going on there. Um, and then if you have anything to say about it, just you can start talking. <laughs> no, the man isn't real. The entire thing is part of the art. It's all paint. I wonder when when did they find a time to do this because it's, it's huge, you know? If I know. In the middle of the painting if some police, you know, drop by or something asking. <laughs> It's yeah, no, it's it's amazing, and that's that's yeah. one of the things that's so interesting about Banksy is that he really I, is he's his identity yeah. is still hidden. Um, yeah, so it right, makes right. you wonder, like, how did he <laughs> do that? And it would have had to have been in the middle of the night. Um, so another yeah, interesting, it's another interesting thing is that that you know this is not only one person could finish things that one person could finish. No, he yeah. has a team. He has a yeah. team. So he has people behind him helping him. Do they get paid to do in this? <laughs> <coughs> okay, so you've had a minute to look at it. So um, who, let's go to, the rat may say, wow, you will not remove me. I will kill you first. Good. That is a very violent message, right? So it's possible that Banksy is suggesting um, that anybody who tries to cover up his work is going to pay for it. So he's going to come after them. So it's possible that that's, that's one part of the message. Anybody have anything else? I have another one. Idea? Sure, Michael? I think, I think it's when um, the people are protesting to the government, um, the government is trying to... Uh, I don't know, it's when, okay. when they don't want to... They, they want silence the people, silence. So they yeah, exactly. 
It's censorship. Yeah. So they want they want to silence them, and it's true. Um, it's very con it's a very controversial topic, and there's a lot of people who are completely against graffiti because of its vandalism, and they feel like it's destroying public property, and they have no right to do that. So um, we could easily turn this into a debate where one side would be arguing that no, graffiti is it's art. It deserves to be there. The artists are creating something useful. But then on the other hand, there's um, the people who feel like it's completely destructive and um, they, they want to cover it up. So this image is showing um, the art and then also the person who would be painting over top of it. So he's kind of making a political message that, you know, we're going to cut you down. But the people always have the power to avoid that. Yep, that's true. <clears throat> so, yes. Does anybody have any other thoughts about this one? I really like this one. I think it's really cool because the first time I saw it, I thought that was a real man. <laughs> yes. I was like, what? So I think it's really well done. Um, Fanny, do you have any ideas about this one? Yes. That graffiti is scaring me. Really, I don't like it. Yeah, it's a little bit violent, right? And it's a rat, so rats are kind of gross. <laughs> you don't like this one? <laughs> okay, well the next one's a rat too, so maybe I'll just skip over it. <laughs> um, sure, personally, Eric? Personally, I think that uh, he wants to say that sometimes when you try to do something positive, there could be a rat or a Batman trying to ruin it. Good, yeah. No, that's a really good idea. So there's lots of different things that this could mean. So um, you could say that the guy painting is trying to do something positive for um, for society by covering it up. Ex uh huh. Exactly. Except there's a big bad big blah, big bad rat coming to yeah. <laughs> ruin his plan. Yeah. Okay, let's go to another one. Um, since Fanny hates rats, I'm gonna skip over this rat one. <laughs> <laughs> So this one has a more obvious message, I think, but just take a look at it. I know that the white sign, you mean peace, right? Yep, it's a yep. peace sign. Yeah. And then, um, two guys with the violence weapon, which is another guy having the RPG. <laughs> yep, so there's um, guys with violent weapons. And another guy's uh, like a painting or also a weapon. Yeah, I'm not sure. So another guy's painting. Yeah. Both of those guys have guns. Okay. Yes. Both of them have guns, and one of them is pointing the gun, and the other one is painting that peace sign. Oh, so I it's know. A guy it's, with it's, a guy with a gun painting a peace sign. Yeah, no, it's ironic, showing that it's the good, more, it's ironic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah um, more city that. Yeah, they try to make peace, but at the same time, what the more that they want to make peace, the more violence they're being up, bring up. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. It's like um, we are always looking for peace, but using violence. Yep. And it maybe it says something about the mentality of the soldiers. Um, they feel like what what they're doing is is for peace, right? Right. Um, but other people would view it differently. Like a lot of people would say that war, I'm going to type this, war and peace are opposites, right? Mm -hmm. But some people believe that war is a means to gain peace. Peace. Oh, I can't type. Peace. There we go. <laughs> so it depends on the way you look at it. Um, I think this is really interesting because you actually see a soldier painting the peace sign. So I don't know. Does anybody else have any thoughts about that? Uh, Giovanni, do you have any th any thoughts about that one? Uh, well, uh, I saw that symbol, but I don't remember what exactly means. It's a peace, a peace sign. So it's a symbol for peace. 
Okay. And there's two soldiers there. One of them is painting the peace sign, and the other one is pointing a gun. So um, Philip pointed out that it's ironic that you see a soldier painting a peace sign. It's ironic. Does anybody else have anything to say about this one? Ooh, I thought we'd get a lot more debate out of that. <laughs> no? Okay. Um, let's see. We'll go to the next one. <laughs> this is funny. So this is another, it's another war related image. So can somebody describe what they see here just on the surface level without thinking about the politics or anything? What do you see here? Um, Fanny? Uh, uh, I, it's the opposite. The, the, soldier, the soldier is it's called frisked. Frisked. He's being being frisked by the woman. Um, frisked. And that's the opposite of what? Uh, normally, the soldier uh, being frisked by the, by the other people. Yeah, exactly. Normally, it's the soldier doing the frisking. <laughs> Yes. So, okay. It's a contradiction, I see. Yeah, it's a contradiction, good. Um, how about the soldier looks innocent? Ali, do you have a microphone? Huh? Do you want to kind of uh, tell us what you think's going on there? Mm, what do you the, think about when you see that? The soldier looks innocent. The uh, he um, wants to uh, he, he, uh, lie the the children. children. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Um. Okay. Let's see. Does anybody else have anything they want to say about this one? Philip, Giovanni, oh, no. Eric. Uh, I think it's it's uh, the, the first uh, you know you know the first minute that is that I see this picture, the word transparency popped up my head, and I think a lot of time the the government of the country, you know, they just, they just how to say that they cover up a lot of things that. They don't want to let the, the population, the their the people know that what what they have been doing, what they have been doing, something like that. Yeah. And so we are we are the population, we are the people. We really have you know have little chance to ask for to know things that that they are been hiding for a long time. Yeah. yeah so this is kind of like um it's a symbol showing um, a common person frisking a soldier to kind of get to the truth, right? So they're digging for answers yeah, because yeah, there's so many exactly. things that the government hides. It's like saying that the people want to know the truth. Is that what you mean? Yep, yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's a, good, that's a really good point. So that's a political message or a social message, you could say. It's both. Um, uh, what I else? See, I see it, this woman, so I think she's trying to... How do you say it's rest, rest, no? When... Look arrest? for something. Yeah, arrest. Um, she trying to say it. no. Um, she nobody feel comfortable when when they touch her parts. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. I, I think that, that. Yeah, that's really good. So it could be more of a physical thing, like she's trying to arrest him because uh, maybe something was done to her by. A soldier, so it could be that type of message, like civilians being harmed, and now they're trying to like get back at the soldiers by arresting them. 
you know, actually, plus that America has a lot of problem with the police brutality. And yeah. by showing the picture to against the brutality of police, you know. Yep. Yeah. There's a there's definitely a lot of that. <laughs> there's a lot of that. And there's also a lot of problems where the Americans go into different countries and um, sometimes can be violent towards civilians. So this this woman kind of represents a civilian, um, and it's like it's her turn to frisk the soldier. You know, she's he's the one in the position of uh, vulnerability. Vulnerability. Yeah. So there's a lot of different messages here. Again, um, it could mean lots of different things. On the surface, it's a soldier and a girl frisking him, right? But um, underneath, underneath that, there's a political and social messages. Eric, I see, is typing something. Eric, you can talk if you want. Uh, no, maybe uh, it represents that always when you do something, before you do it, you have to think about how this action could affect to other people. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's another message. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so we've only got about one minute left, so I'm not sure. Do you want to do one more before we leave? Yes. All right, let's see. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> so this one's kind of weird. Um, <laughs> I'll just give Jeez. you a minute. Oh, okay. A husband got his wife with his with her boyfriend. Yeah, it looks like that's what's going on there. Might be something about infidelity. Infidelity for cheating. Good. Does anyone have any other ideas? Uh, sometimes, uh, what are you looking for? It's near, nearer, uh, you know. Closer? It's closer than you thought. Yes, good. So this, I think this one is a lot different from some of Banksy's other work because it's not political, it's not about war, at least I don't think it's about war, 